Hello and welcome to Close Up Culture Podcast. I am James Prestridge and as always I'm joined by Anna Mayers. Anna, how are you doing? Yo, I'm good. I'm currently eating some porridge, living a good life. The snow is melting, um, which is great because obviously the, the snow is beautiful and lovely and pretty, but it disrupts everything and means that we can't drive places safely, which messes everything up. But yeah, I'm doing good. Um, feeling positive for the new year. Um, yeah. How are you, James? I'm doing OK. Do you know what I wanted to quiz you about, actually, is I saw on your Instagram story you were playing a bit of Minecraft. Is this yeah. a new hobby? Is this a new hobby or is <laughs> something this... Something else, another string to my bow. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's something that um, me and my little brother every now and then do, whether it's on the Xbox or the Switch. We were playing on the Switch. Um, and it, it's quite fun. We often do um, creative mode, which... Um, I normally end up building like a major house and by the time I've put up like one wall he's like already built a castle he's <laughs> he's really good at it um but um, the other day we were playing on survival which I can just about find things in creative when we have them all given to us in a big folder so on survival you have to go and obviously dig and cut down trees to build them yourself again by the time I've made like a little mud hut my brother has made a castle and found me a diamond sword or something and it's like very <laughs> mental and um, but it was quite funny because he um the, the the world where we spawned it was kind of like quite sandy and lots of islands and stuff so I was like oh I'm going to claim this island and build stuff and um one night my brother came into my house that I'd built it wasn't really a house it was just four walls um, and started digging straight down which rule one of Minecraft I know this never yep. dig straight down um but he was like YOLO I want to find diamonds so he kept digging and digging and digging and digging um, and eventually he got to a point where like he'd found some bits, but it was like he was just going to let his house, him, his lack of food kill him because um, he'd gone too far and couldn't get back out. And I was just annoyed that he'd made a hole in my floor. <laughs> um, and he was like, oh, Anna, if you look up, you'll see it's daytime now so that you can go out because I don't like going out in the dark um, in real life or in Minecraft. <laughs> Um, so I looked up, but to my stupidity, instead of pressing the, instead of using the little lever, I don't know the words, instead of using the, oh, the joystick, that's it. The joystick to look up, I used the joystick to move forward and I fell straight no. down the hole and I died. <laughs> but um, in that survival game, I only died that once, whereas my little brother, who is Minecraft Pro, as I've just been telling you, um, died about seven times. So it actually made me feel quite good that I was better at him. Uh, then him at it for a little while technically you're achieving the objectives of the game better than he is if you're staying yeah, alive exactly um so yeah um we don't play it a lot and when we play it i'm not very good but i really do enjoy it it is a cool a cool game although it really is a... lots of creatures that are bad so yeah <laughs> my week i watch three films one that we're going to talk about today and the other two i thought i'd just bring up real quick one was Sephora, which is Jumanji in space. Sorry, the way you said that then, um, because we've just been talking about Zendaya and Euphoria, <laughs> I was like, Sephora? Ooh, that sounds interesting. Do Anna, you physically grew up watching that film. You had the, that on a box set with Jumanji. What are you on about? So please, sorry, con continue, James. Just thought I'd share my stupidity there. <laughs> Did I pronounce that weirdly? Zephora, Zephora. I think I think the way you pronounced it, it sounded like Euphoria in my head. So I was like, <laughs> "What's that?" But I'd say Zephora. Zephora. Sorry, please continue. So I've watched this film before a long, long time ago, and none of it rang a bell with me. But Kristen Stewart's in it, okay? So I thought I'm going to watch this a because I love Jumanji, so this is bound to be good. B I in the mood for some Kristen Stewart. What I had forgotten was Kristen Stewart gets frozen about 20 minutes in and you don't see her again until the finale. So I'm sitting here watching Josh Hutchinson and another child actor act for like a, uh, an hour and a half or so. It's good. I enjoyed it, but it's not as good as the original Jumanji and they freeze their best actor for an hour, which is, is dumb. Yeah, that's quite sad. And then the other film I watched also on film for was The Italian Job, the original one with Michael Caine. And it's brilliant. It was so much fun. Just sometimes movies just aren't fun enough. I agree with that. They I aren't agree. fun enough. They try and be too complicated. They try and be too smart. 
But this one, similar to Baby Driver, and you can tell Baby Driver got inspiration from it. It's just fun, simple story uh, with lots of good writing and fun performances. And the best ending ever. I love the ending of The Italian Job. It's so good. It's just, yeah, it's so good. I was going to try and mime a car driving backwards then, but I was just flailing my arm around but I was like no I can't even give it justice <laughs> Adam we're on episode like 91 of the podcast and you're miming stuff the, and no I, I, I'm still that. unable to speak or properly do a podcast be a podcast person um here we go maybe after 100 I'll be able to do it but anyway let's get into the film this week which is Hillbilly Elegy a Yale law student drawn back to his hometown reflects on his family's history and his own future it's based on the 2016 memoir of the same name written by J.D. Vance. So when um, I first saw the trailer for this film, obviously it was Amy Adams. It was like, bam, we've got to do this. We love a bit of Amy, um, which is why when you were saying about the spam thing and you said Amy, I was like, I just want to check what Jamie you meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the first thing that I was kind of drawn to was actually the title of it, because being a Taylor Swift fan, um, she's recently come out with another new album, but her previous album before that um folklore the bonus song called the lakes uh, i absolutely love i think it's my favorite song on the album but the first line is is it romantic how all my elegies eulogize me and i was like whoa she's such a good singer all these words make such good sense um but i didn't really know what elegies meant um i was like it's taylor swift i'll just go along with it so when this film was released and the title had elegy in it i was like whoa what what does this word mean it's suddenly in my life a lot um, and it means kind of um, about poems and poetry. So obviously Taylor's talking about, isn't it romantic? How all kind of the songs and poems I've written will eulogise me. I'll be remembered for that. So it's really interesting um, that this this guy, um, J.D. Vance, has taken kind of his hillbilly background and said that actually I may be something different in the future. I may be a big shot lawyer, et cetera, et cetera. But my um, elegy, the, the the poetry behind me um is is this kind of southern america style and that i can kind of hide it but that will always be me um so i just think that that was a cool place for this film to to start for me personally kind of this play on words and this word being around my life a lot um as i'm always singing it in my car um but no it, it made me really excited to see what this film was all about really yeah and talking about elegies and poetry this has a structure where it very much rhymes present with past it's not film about what's going to happen necessarily it's about what has happened how do we get here and how has that affected the present yeah what did you make of that structure and you know starting off with him as a kid but then going shooting to the four, uh, 14 years later and we see he's a very successful student yeah, I, I thought it was really interesting to see him grow up and I always wondered kind of where it would end up. And then suddenly it was like this many years later and we're here. And I was like, oh, it's quite sad that that kind of young actor is that kind of part over because I'd love to see more of that. But obviously we're then treated to the whole film being <laughs> in this kind of back and forth, which I was like, you know what? They have ticked all the boxes. Um, I really, really liked it. And again, like you say, kind of the poetry and the mirroring imagery of it all. Um, I just think it worked so, so well. I think we should get straight into the performance of this young child actor who was brilliant. So young Owen Astolos, who plays the young J.D. Vance, I thought was brilliant. And I think it said a lot to me in this film that Amy Adams is in this film, but there's actually two or three performances in here which are better than hers. And his is one of them. I thought he was fantastic, as was... Uh, Glenn Close as Mama, 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 as Mama. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought that the casting in this was brilliant, and especially kind of um, the kids from when we saw them as young to when we saw them as adults. It was like, whoa! It feels like um, Boyhood or something like that, where it they they genuinely have filmed it then and then they filmed it later. That's how well it was casted. Um, it worked so well, and again to have. Um, Amy Adams and Glenn Close play these kind of two versions of a character one um, in a certain time period and then another one um, so many years later it was so interesting to see them and that's it we've got some amazing people fronting this film but actually everyone in it is so talented um, 
Yeah. And it was amazing as well, because obviously at the end, we're treated with the credits to see real life photos. And again, a big round of applause to the casting team to, for pulling this together because they really did look true to the people they were playing. I mean, this film for me, just kind of skipping ahead to my final thoughts, was about a six out of ten, maybe. I liked parts of it, but overall as a film, it didn't really hook me in at any point. But when you have those real-life pictures come up at the end, it really does land a different emotional note. And for me, that like added another mark onto the film entirely, as well, especially when you see how well the casting's been done, and you feel like, oh... I feel like I did just watch a piece of history there. That was really, really compelling. Yeah. So it's it's based on um, a memoir by J.D. Vance, whose story we see. Um, and the memoir was on the New York Times bestseller list in both 2016 and 2017. Um, and it's crazy to think that I was looking. He's currently 36. And how mental it must be to, by 36, have a bestselling memoir and kind of a film of your life out. Um, and you're not even halfway through your life. Um, it must be so crazy to see that. But something that made me sad and um, kind of hearing your thoughts just then kind of I understand the six out of ten and whatever. Um, but I've seen a few reviews kind of um, Empire didn't really like the film. Rotten Tomatoes hasn't liked the film. Um, and then there's one on The Guardian um, and it says that they've tried but failed to show the real America. And it's like, whoa, did they this is the real America. This is a boy's real America and he's written it. And this is what it is to him. And it's interesting kind of learning why people didn't like the film, maybe. I, I really did like it, but I understand kind of a six out of ten. Um, so where people have kind of put it down and said that it doesn't show the real America, it's like, well, do you know what it's based on? Like, it's not a fake kind of trying to be hillbilly people or whatever. Like, this is someone's real life that they've put together in a book um, and they've kind of made a, a film as close to life as they possibly could. Um, so it really kind of does make me upset reading that. Um, because I feel again I've not read the full um, review um, but it makes me sad to think that a lot of people haven't maybe got it like um, it, it was meant to be got. I would say six out of ten for me is a good mark just to put that out there because I do grade on like the scale of history of cinema so you've got to leave lots of room for something like what's that film we watched I want to say Boss Baby, but it wasn't Boss Baby. The one with the guy who pretends to be a child and does awful things. Oh, um, oh my God. Um, <laughs> I've, I've tried to wipe it from my memory. <laughs> um, little Man, okay. Oh, Little Man. <sighs> so Little Man, that I need the scale to be big enough to really show how truly terrible that film is. So for me, anything above four or five is a, is a good possible film. And I felt like this was what it was. Um, I didn't feel like it had the real striking, deep moments that really would propel this film into like Oscar bait, like a big emotional American drama. There were some really good moments, which I've noted down, but I would just say it was kind of like a, a decent film, fairly well told, and with, I thought the performances were actually the strongest part of the film, yeah. uh, which is why I brought them up first. No, I, I definitely agree. I think that if we didn't know it was real, you'd think it was kind of a cheesy, even Hallmark-based film where everything is kind of bad, but it all turns out fine for the characters. Um, so no, definitely, it's it's the performances that really push this um, to be the film that it is. Um but no, I, I agree with the, the six out of ten, um, definitely. Maybe if you want to bring up a few things you liked about it and we can and we can start talking about those, because, yeah, to hear it got really bad reviews does surprise me because obviously the people involved, it is a good story with a good message at the heart of it. And it's not like it's, I didn't watch this and say this is a bad film in any way. It's not like there's any technical flaws or the story isn't compelling in a, in a sense. What were some of the things that you really enjoyed? Um, I really love the soundtrack, Chef's Kiss. Um, it was by Hans Zimmer, so obviously it's going to be mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, and I, I really thought that it framed the, the film and the emotions really well. Um, and I also love the colour. Um, the colours used in it, that when it was kind of in, they were showing the the, the past, it was very green, 
um, and rural and quite bright um, and saturated. Whereas when we were looking, I want to say present day, but still in the past, um, but when um, JD was older, um, it was all very grey and dark to kind of show that he'd settled down into kind of an office job and things weren't as bright and sunny as his childhood um, was um, in ways. Um, so, yeah, to me, it wasn't necessarily the the story that really brought this to life. It, it was the characters and then how they how they really showed the story through the colours, um, really drawing us into this world. Um, and then, yeah, the, the soundtrack I, I really liked. Speaking of colour, actually, I think one of the best things about Amy Adams is she has these incredible expressive eyes. Yeah. And it's best utilised in a film called The Arrival, where she's interacting with extraterrestrials. And there's shots in that movie where her eyes are just these expressive beacons of just awe. And it's really the emotional centre of that movie. What I like, really liked about this film was we have those big blue expressive eyes in the early years of her character, but it hits you so hard when you see her in hospital when she's really struggling with her drug misuse and her eyes are almost greyed out and they're, they're dead in a way. And I thought that was really powerful use of colour and of one of cinema's greatest tools, which is Amy Adams' eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring up one of my favourite points in this movie. I loved Mama in this movie. She was fantastic. The performance from Glenn Close, fantastic. Yeah. One of my favourite moments, and I think this was one of those moments that makes you kind of sit up and you say, oh, this is, this, I'm getting into this, was when she marched from the hospital to the home to take back JD and kind of set his life back on a, on a straight and narrow. And I thought that was really well done. And to be honest, I don't think I was expecting the story to take this turn where she took over the parenting. And I really did like that. I I love her character. I mean, it's a very, you know, pull up your bootstraps kind of story. Just work hard and you'll you'll improve your life. What did you think of the that scene and just the general message of the film? I, I really liked it. I loved the whole message being um well for me I saw it as obviously your parents um, love you and want to protect you, um, but no parent is perfect and there will be times where they may not treat us right. And there's always that thought of when I'm a parent, I'm never going to do that. But then as we see when Amy Adams does become a parent, that the same things happen, that she can be so loving and caring, but she can also get angry and frustrated and take that out on her kids. Um, and it's the kind of thing that JD is living through that. And again, he'll tell himself that when I have kids, I'll never do that. Um, and you've just got to hope that um, he, obviously he meets someone who um, is loving and as caring as him. Um, and obviously we learn at the end that they did have kids um, and that uh, the Amy Adams character did kind of get back on track with her life and now spends a lot of time with her grandchildren. So you've just got to hope that kind of through care and love that you don't end up like that. Um, but one of my favourite moments was when... Um, uh, Bev and JD were arguing and fighting and then JD didn't want anything to do with his mum but then she walked onto the porch and was like well I'm going to go to the card shop if you want to come um, and then they kind of have a, a fun moment together and end up stealing some cards which is so fun um, and JD's having a ball but then suddenly bam it goes crazy again when Bev just goes a bit crazy and angry and I think that's it. This this whole story is about family and how family can be angry and feel dangerous and scary and upsetting. But family is all we've got, really. And a lot of times we don't want to accept who we've got, but actually that's who we have got. And we can either accept that and just go with it or accept it in a way of taking and learning lessons from them. Like JD uh, narrates at the end that Mama, Mama <laughs> taught him. Um, which I really liked and I think that was one of the reasons I really loved this um, that it shows kind of the truth with families that there are ups and downs um, and it is just how you kind of take that on whether you see it as a lesson or decide that you don't want anything to do with them. On a slightly lighter note you just brought up the scene with the cards there one of the notes one of the first notes I made on this film was this young boy is quite clumsy because 
in that card shop, he falls over and knocks over the stand. And a couple of scenes earlier, he's trying to collect up the pick up the dog and he bumps his head on a table and knocks over all these eggs. Is there something about Southern Americans where they're quite clumsy children? I don't know, maybe. Um, I feel there's a stereotype of kind of Southern Americans being a certain way and especially with kind of the hillbilly title and when JD is older and sat around a table and there's all these posh lawyers are talking about hillbillies being like oh yeah they're this and that and he's like well actually no that's um quite rude that you've just said that I love that scene yeah it is it is a good one it's it's the kind of one that I want to say it's a mic drop one but I feel I wanted JD to fully like have an argument and fully stand up for himself which he doesn't really do but I guess he has to stay quite um, professional and he wants a job from these people he doesn't want to be like blacklisted from them <laughs> what I liked about that scene was he was toasting the right and they were being upper class snobs they were being condescending but I really liked how he didn't win the conversation you know he, yeah. they get in the final dagger line about well your mom maybe your mom should be getting this job and he just has to sit there silently and suck it in I mean the easy thing there would have been for him then to get another jab in and win the conversation you say oh how smart's JD Um, But I really liked that he had to sit there and and just stomach it. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing that that being real, we accept that that happens. But it's the kind of thing that if... I thought I'd mute myself. (laughs) Well, obviously not. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Sorry. I've lost my train of thought. Obviously, we know this is real. um, And it's the kind of thing that we accept that that's happened. But if this film had been fiction... Um, they the writers possibly would have written in, well, he's a, a crazy hillbilly. Of course, he's going to stand up and start shouting and do all this stuff. But actually, it is real, and he wouldn't do that. And why would someone do that? So they're just going to stay in their place, even if that hurts um, how they're feeling and whatever, um, and just accept that people will always have something to say. But actually, if this is who he is, he needs to accept that, and they need to accept it too. I, I was trying to think of other films that this reminded me of. When I read the synopsis, I thought immediately of Sweet Home Alabama. But when you start watching this film, you realise it's nothing like that. It actually reminded me of a Reese Witherspoon movie. How, James, how do you not make a note Easily of this? Easily Blonde? She goes to... No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, Wild. A Reese Witherspoon movie called Wild. So I just typed in Reese Witherspoon Walk because in the movie she goes on this long walk but then of course walk the line comes up so (laughs) complete stupidity on my part but just the way this film deals with cycles of abuse and how you know families get trapped these awful cycles and all it takes well sometimes all it takes is luck obviously and someone just to really get their head down at work and they can get themselves out of this situation and and hopefully you'd imagine JD has created a life for himself where he can provide for his own family, provide for his mother and even for his sister, which we were speaking about the casting earlier. I found it funny how how Hayley Bennett, who plays Lindsay, the sister, is just cast for young Lindsay and older Lindsay. They trust her just to carry that across, um, as Amy Adams does, actually. But, I mean, her character doesn't seem to change at all, looks-wise. What? What? She plays young Lindsay as well. Yeah. Oh my god! That's what I was like getting at before, being like the casting in this is insane because they look like the exact same person. (laughs) Because of bloody ears, I didn't realize. I've been googling like who played young Lindsay. (laughs) Nothing comes up. Oh my god! I hate myself. She is so good. Oh my god! I was sat watching this film like, (laughs) damn, (laughs) Reggie. I was sat watching this film like damn these casting people oh my god they have got it spot on how they have found people who look exactly the same well anna that's another thing that makes you look stupid when you don't read the room when you don't read the credits oh my god (sighs) Haley bennett claps for you claps for you sorry i I got a barking situation over (laughs) here if you want to if you want to move us into the next topic i think we're fairly close to rounding up here I, I've got nothing left in my notes no, I've got nothing left another cast member I want to mention is Frida Pinto who plays JD's um kind of I think he's her she's his girlfriend and then becomes his wife um Usher 
Um, and she is a lovely character. Um, and again, someone who's based on a real person. And it's so nice to see her kind of compared to all these um, other characters. She's very different. As she's very kind of sweet and from a very different background to JD. Um, and I love the idea that this film, as well as looking at family and how people deal with that, it looks at love and how um, often people are stuck in situations where their partner has lost a job or can't find work or they're in different places. Um, and that can be very difficult. And I think films can often make that the storyline of all these people are going to split up or separate because of the situation. Um, but it just showed that actually if people do care for each other and have this community feel, um, whether they're kind of from South America and have this have been brought up in a certain way or from somewhere else. Um, I think that she was a really refreshing um, role and character in this. And I think that she played uh, Usha really well. Um, and I, I really want to see her in, in more. I think that she's a really lovely actress. Um, and I think that she played the part amazingly well. Yeah, I really like that part where they're talking on the phone mm. and... Um, Obviously, JD's letting out a lot emotionally, and Usha makes the comparison between, you know, her dad coming to America with nothing and having to start again. I think that's a really powerful thing that, you know, this is a very universal story in a sense about people who are born into maybe a very um, poor community and they have to, you know, find a way through kind of sheer determination and will to pull themselves out of that and and. No, but I, I love what you said then as well of this kind of being a universal story that even though this is set where it is, um, it actually it looks at family and love and relationships and how people kind of do live. So whether that's without money or through stealing, um, having to have kind of food parcels and things delivered. Um, again, this idea of America um, kind of paying for health care and stuff, which seems like the most mental thing um when we live in in England where we don't have to and if if you're hurt or dealing with something awful um you aren't alone but actually in America it's a whole other situation where you've got to kind of consider right do I want to kind of have a a really great house and life or do I want to pay for my family's medical bills it's a really again interesting conversation starter to how we live in the different societies that we do um, but as well, how people can make their dreams come true. And um, like Hannah Montana sings, you can change your hair, you can change your clothes, you can change your mind. It's just the way it goes. You can say goodbye and you can say hello, but you'll always find your way back home. That JD went off to become this great lawyer person, but actually he always remembered where he was from and appreciated that and accepted it. And even though at times he may have cried, been angry by how his family had treated him, they always were there to show love. And I know every family situation is different. I don't want to say you should always just accept your family and take lessons from it because obviously a lot of people may feel abused or attacked or gaslighted by their family. We won't go into it. But in this specific topic and situation, it was so lovely that JD was able to grow um, and learn and love his family um, as, as they did love him. Whoa, Thanks, Hannah never, Montana, for that. <laughs> never has a Hannah Montana quote landed so profoundly. That was incredible. <sighs> Thanks. I've waited my whole life. I wait my whole life for moments like that where I can just quote like random songs or TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking there about there not being any healthcare or any net for these people. And that has really driven home in the scene where they're in the hospital and the mother is in desperate need of going to rehab and the than uh, just even staying in the hospital for more than a night and they're basically being told they're gonna be shipped out in an hour or so yeah it just shows these people they have no there's no structure in there to help lift them up and it's just going to be jd's sheer determination and some help from his mama to stay on the right path that's gonna that's gonna help them so and you think about the amount of families like the kid living next door who are just not fortunate enough to have that but anyway i think we can start rounding up there as I said, I had this down as a, a six out of ten, which is more on the on the positive side. But actually, discussing it here with you now, um, it only gets better when you when you reflect on it. And some of the moments were some of the moments land really well. I thought, and you, I, I, you can tell from watching this that the book is amazing. Uh, but as I said, I more than anything enjoyed the performances. Yeah, how about you, Anna? 
yeah I I really did like it um it was one I actually watched in two sittings um because I, I had like a free hour so I started watching it and then um took the break to go and do what I was doing and then continued it um and it was really nice to kind of split it up and I'm not saying watch it like that and I'd happily watch it all in full but that was just how I watched it um, and sometimes when I do stuff like that when I come back to it I'm very like oh this is boring I want it to be over now like why did I do this I'm kind of over it um, but with this one um, it was like just jumping back into this kind of um, this um, the this situation this topic this film it was really nice um, and I really did like it I love I think that was it the performances um Hayley bloody Bennett <laughs> shocking us all with that performance I'm just gonna have to watch it again just for her to be honest um but no I I really did like it and appreciate it and I think it's one that I liked better because I knew that it was real I think that if it had just been a general film I would have been like boring predictable everything obviously turns out right for these people but I think to know that it was based on um, a real story and um, it really added this um, kind of love um, and interest to it that I feel that people can relate to in wherever they're from and whoever they are. Um, and it's one that I definitely recommend. Again, it's the kind of thing that if you're looking for a crazy, gory horror film or a specific one, it may not be that. But if you're looking for, I think, a general watch that's quite nice and loving, um, but it's still a really great film, I think this is the one I'd, I'd recommend to you. Yeah, I definitely watched this at the wrong time. Similar to The Devil all the time. I watched it in the evening, late in the evening. And when you've got you know, Amy Adams' character suffering as much as she does in this film, really hard watch. And maybe that's not the best thing to watch late at night. So I think that maybe affected my viewing. And I think it's important to point that out. So I'm still thinking about the fact that this has got bad reviews because I really didn't think it would. Yeah, well, I'm just looking on Letterboxd and it's got like 2.5. Like, I don't know what issue people have with this films. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, people are giving it one and a half stars. I, I don't really? get it. Are there any feedback on these? or? Well, this one and a half, one star is put, you either die an Oscar snobby or you live long enough to see yourself win a Razzie. That's it for that one. Um one and a half is gotta admire Ron Howard for making sure Glenn and Amy keep a healthy social distance from that Oscar. I thought they gave, gave amazing performances. Um, two stars. The postman knocked on my door halfway through the movie. We had a very good conversation. The interaction between us was so fun and amusing, unlike the script of this movie. I genuinely disagree completely with all these people and have no clue what their issue is. But he's just said the was really fun and amusing. This film isn't supposed to be fun and amusing. Oh, no, he said his conversation with the postman was fun and amusing, unlike the film. Yeah, but the film isn't oh, supposed the film to be isn't fun and amusing. Be. Yeah. I just don't know. Yeah, people are really saying that Amy's going to get the Razzie for this. I, I don't understand. Are these people Do, okay? Have they I, have you seen the same film? I will say, as I mentioned, I don't think Amy Adams' performance is the strongest in this. Because, you know, she's doing a lot of, like, she's in pain a lot of the movies. Yeah. She's, like, screaming and shouting. I don't think it's, it's her, I don't think it's it's her best Razzie performance. Material. But it's not Razzie material. It's not Razzie material in my book. I, I think maybe why people bring up Razzie a lot is because this is the kind of film, as I mentioned, that aspires to win an Oscar. And I don't, I don't think it lands deep enough to be an Oscar film. I, I think it's good, but it's not that good. But to say it's a Razzie, yeah. it seems like jumping on the bandwagon a little bit of just hating on this movie. No, these people need to watch more movies, maybe. There's way worse movies out there. Trust yeah, me, there we, are we way watch them. <laughs> little man, little man. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, yeah, we'll end fact. it on there. Of us thinking it is good, Yeah. no matter what other people say solid film would love to hear from people who didn't like it because maybe i'll have to go and read some reviews be, uh, and just see what what wasn't there i mean i've struggled to put my finger on maybe there was something missing in this film for me i've struggled to put my finger on it but the amount of people here that seem to really just be despising it i don't know how you came away from the film feeling like that but anyway thank you for listening yeah thank you for listening and if you disagree that's okay but yeah. 
sorry, that came across really aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end it there. I like the film. The end. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>